Good afternoon, everybody. It's Friday, about 3.15, and I know I haven't done this for a while, you guys, and I apologize. Things have just been so busy with training and all that other fun stuff, but thought I'd just come to you today for a little while, uh, almost like our Friday tradition that uh, we used to do, but it's been a few of these Fridays since since we've done them, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying all the live feeds that we're doing of all the daycare dogs in the morning. Seems like they're getting a few hundred views every time that we do them uh, throughout uh, by the end of the week. And also you guys have taken all that stuff off of, or not off, but all the videos from our Facebook uh, live feeds and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I've uploaded the majority of it to YouTube. So if you guys uh, miss anything during the week here with us, then certainly you can um, you know, really be able to watch it there if you'd like. And it's really, I think we've got up over a hundred videos so far on YouTube, so things are really cranking with that. But I really, uh, you know, the purpose of this, you guys, is uh, of the morning thing, the morning live stream, is just to show you guys a lot about body language. You know, in the morning is when they're the most active. I mean, if we go out, if I brought you outside right now, you're just going to see dogs lying down and not doing too much. And that's, I mean, <laughs> that probably gets a little boring. So really what I want to hear from you guys is what kind of content do you want uh, us to put out? We're in the midst of recording some content for Lily, the St. Bernard that's here for training. And we're going to be putting that out. Uh, she goes home on Tuesday. So we'll probably have her little story that we'll put together for you guys so you can see her from kind of beginning until the end, which will be pretty good. We also had Rigby here last month too and I'm doing the same thing for him as well putting something together. So, you guys, this is kind of the time. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, certainly go ahead and fire away with them. It can be anything dog related from grooming or, you know, training, socializing, nutrition, um, you know, anything along those lines. So please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Uh, so on the flip side of that, you guys, we got Labor Day coming up right around the corner. I can't believe next weekend is September, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and I honestly don't think that I've been online since our big event, which was a huge success. I'm so happy with the way that went. Everybody that attended it this year says they want to do it again next year, both attendees and vendors. And it's been, uh, it's been such a good amount of feedback too, from what we've heard from everybody. And I'm just so thankful for that. It was like I told you guys earlier, it was something that I wanted to do. It was something that I wanted to, you know, basically put out there for everybody. And we just finally decided to do it and we did it. And we, none of us, I mean, we couldn't be happier. Literally from a staff perspective, kind of backstage, it went off without a hitch. We didn't have any problems. There was no issues that we had to uh, resolve or anything along that. So it was, it was just, it just went really, really well. <laughs> Kelly, how do I get what's in say yes, mother? <laughs> uh, first of all, Kelly, I think there's a little bit of a language barrier. That's the first thing. Uh, but you could certainly arrange it with a bark of some sort. Uh, yeah, and you know what, Kelly? There's actually a bunch of people that have missed it that were, uh, you know, our current clients. A lot of it was because people were out of town for August and vacation time. So we're, we're kind of toying around with the thought of doing something maybe in September next year. Not really sure yet. Obviously, we're a year out, and but the other part of that I look at is okay. Everybody's back, and summer's over. Is it something that you really want to do? Uh, you know, again, like have another weekend full of something. I know from my perspective, it just seems like there's always stuff going on every weekend in the summer, and uh, that that's kind of where I look at it too. So it's you know, no matter what you know, which direction we pick. I think that we're going to end up with, you know, obviously we're not going to have everybody here that wants to be able to go, but we had a pretty good turnout. I, I mean, I think we're estimating two to 300 people that, that rolled through here. And like I said, people were showing up at 930. I mean, we didn't have, some vendors weren't even here yet. And that was crazy to me, but hey, when you want to show up early, you show up early. That's for sure. But uh, the other thing too, you guys, is I've done a lot of these podcasts too, so if you have a second, just go on to uh, iTunes and just search Vermont Dog Trainer Show. Had some really cool conversations with some other trainers. 
you will definitely get a different perspective of other trainers, what they try to um, put across um, and what they want, you know, their advice for dog owners, what they think of certain breeds. You'll get a lot of really good information with that type of stuff. And this is really going to open you up, you guys. So this is more of just following what, you know, I put out there. This is really going to open it up into maybe what some other trainers think. And I've got to tell you, I've got some really top of the line trainers lined up for really the next month. And I think it's going to really, you know, resonate with you guys. It's going to be a lot of really good stuff. Uh, it's not stuff that will probably be readily right on our Facebook page. I'll obviously put up the, the shortcuts to the podcast. But it's just a lot of, you can see the microphones over my shoulder here. Uh, but it's really, it's a lot of fun. And Serena and I are going to try to get back into doing the, our own little podcast here during the week. Our training schedule, you guys, between training the dogs and the amount of dogs that we've had here on top of the appointments that we've had, it's made it, I mean, next to impossible to, to uh, literally sit down for half an hour to 45 minutes to do the podcast. So I apologize for that. My job next year is to make that happen next summer to make that happen more routine and get a little bit more of that structure is really what it all boils down to but all in all it was uh you know for us it was a fantastic summer and uh just a lot of good stuff happening for us more growth uh more exposure all that kind of stuff so we're we're more than pleased with it that's for sure so today you guys you know I've talked a lot about uh, a dog's bubble with it getting bigger and bigger and that is something that I actually, I think I actually talk with a lot of clients with that almost every week and you know in class we talked about that last night. Uh, we also talked about really being as relaxed as you possibly can while walking your dog. I don't know if I'm really a big fan of the fake it until you make it type of statement. I kind of used to be. But more and more when I'm seeing, you know, when I'm teaching people to walk their dogs, the fake it till you make it thing, I, I don't, uh, I mean, what can you fake if you think about it? You can fake being, you know, the best dog handler in the world, but your dog still is going to know what's happening. I think instead of faking it until you make it, I like to be that person that's going to guide you into that, into the road or in, down that uh, line that is going to show you how to do it. And then that confidence will just slowly build. And I, and I think that's where it, it comes from. It's, you know, it'd be easy to say, hey, I'm going to be a professional NBA player. I'm just going to fake it until I make it. Well, it's not going to happen that way at all. And especially since I can't jump or, or run. Uh, that's, that's why the fake it till you make it, I, I don't think I'm a big fan of when it comes to working with our dogs. I remember there was a few weeks ago where we had, there was a dog barking or something. I can't remember the exact scenario. And I, you know, make my, I snap my fingers, make my correction sound and walk towards the dog and the dog changes. And Matt looked at me and he goes, why would that dog do that with you and not with me? And I, I look at it as, and I told him, I said, experience has a lot to do with it uh, because I've done it over and over and over again. And I think I know what it takes inside for the dog to take me seriously. In Matt's scenario, I feel like he's been here a year. It's still new. So he's, Obviously, he had a lot of experience, but not to the extent of what I've had. So he's still learning. Now, can I tell, tell him to fake it until he makes it? Well, how is he supposed to fake a feeling that he doesn't even know what it feels like? And I know that gets a little in-depth with what, you know, we're, we're kind of chatting about. But to me, I can't, t I can't fake, or t I can't tell him to fake, okay, be as confident as you possibly can be in that moment for you know 10 seconds and then let it go away i don't i don't know how to even explain to somebody what that would feel like what it would look like i've always you know you'll hear caesar say walk confidently you certainly can change your body language around there's no doubt about that and i help people do that in the classes and our take-home sessions i think getting the body language more comfortable first will certainly help get the brain in order second I think the more I think about that and I'm kind of talking out loud here is I, I think that will help somebody acknowledge, you know, and that awareness of where they're at both physically and mentally. So if somebody's walking in, and we had a lady last night in class, she was walking with her hands clenched, 
her arms like at a 90 degree angle, hanging onto the leash, not not even um, not looking at her dog, and she was trying to do the best that she possibly could. But she was also very rigid in her body language. And once I got her to, to relax a little bit and make things a little bit easier and m let them flow and let the leash drop and have a little slack to it, then things started to change in her dog. So to me, I couldn't tell her, hey, be as confident as you can be, walk with all sorts of purpose and all sorts of intention, because to her, she doesn't know what it looks like. Uh, you know, she was just putting, you know, she was white knuckling that leash so much. But instead, flipping that script, I can go, look, relax your arms, take a deep breath, nice and easy. The worst thing your, your dog is going to do is pull, which I will certainly help you through. And then from there, we can adjust. And then it takes three or four passes to get used to that feeling. Well, then look, if you can start to focus on the positive parts of that dog starting to walk next to you, then that confidence builds and then you know what it feels like. So you're not having to worry about faking it anymore. You actually know what it feels like and then you have a better chance of trying to uh, repeat that feeling both mentally and physically. And then the sky's the limit from there. I feel like once I can show somebody and have them get a grasp of what's happening and how to move forward and, and have their dog be at their side, then I feel like from there, we can really just, the sky's the limit. We can just build and build and build. We get that foundation work into into place, and then we can move forward from there. So that's that's kind of my take on the whole fake it till you make it thing. I, I'm still not a big, uh, a big believer in it. You can certainly ride the wave and act like you're going to uh, be confident in something. But I think... I think going into it, it's to me, it's also like the first day of a new job. I mean, if you walk into a new office and you don't know anybody there, you know what the position entails because you were in, you interviewed for it, but you don't know the inner workings of everything. Can you fake it until you make it and just pretend that you like you've been there for five years? I don't know if that would come off too well to your peers. Uh, and then if you make a mistake, it's going to really be detrimental to you because you were you know so nervous on that first day. So again, to me, it's more about, hey, let's just take it easy, let's relax, let's just do something um, that's going to get us physically relaxed and focus on relaxing our arms, you know, relax our breathing, and then we're gonna be able to move into that phase of just being able to do our work and be productive with it. So I, that's, that's kind of, you know, my take that goes along with it. But, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think too. Uh, whether you comment now or comment later, you know, below, I'm fine with that. I think, you know, when it comes to, especially walking, who knew that there was, and it's funny, we, I always joke about it with our take home sessions, with our board and train clients. I'm like, who knew you're gonna get a lesson on how to hold a leash and how to walk your dog? I mean, that just the sounds of that sounds so simple and so just like over the top to, you know, it sounds very elementary when, when you boil it all down. Uh, but it is really and truly the basis of the whole foundation of, of you and your dog. It's, it's as fundamental as it gets. If you can't walk your dog on a loose leash, there's probably a lot of things that you're not going to be able to accomplish with your dog. And I think from there, once you get that in place, just walking your dog, then it becomes things become a lot easier from there. I mean, we've got we a lot of our clients have more than one dog at home, so it's not only learning how to walk one dog; it might be walking two or three or four at a time, and that you know once you start doing that on a on a regular basis, then that confidence grows. You know how to handle those dogs, you know how to keep it moving in the same direction. I mean, I, you know, when I first started doing this and doing this out of, out of my house, you know, every day at nine o'clock, Monday through Friday, I took all the dogs for a walk, a leashed walk, and it had to be structured. And we went for an hour. And I mean, there were sometimes 10, 12, 15 dogs. And I, I look back at getting them all leashed up and, you know, getting out of the gates and really moving forward with them. And there was just a lot of really, I. I don't know, there's some, I definitely miss it now. But, you know, when it gets back to like six or seven dogs after you've been doing a dozen, 14 dogs on a regular basis, it seems really, really easy. 
So again, once you've done one and you've done two and you've done three, you know, if you've got two or three dogs at home, once you've done, you know, three of them and then you go back to one, it seems very, very easy. And that's, uh, that's a big part of it. But, um, you know, to, and you guys, the other thing too, to piggyback on the walking dogs, I have to tell you that the one question I get asked the most, and I probably, I, I know I've touched on this, but we've had a ton of new people jump onto our page here in the last, uh, last month or so. The one question I get asked the most is how do you handle a dog off leash that's coming at you while you're walking your dog on leash trying to keep it structured and this is the this is the million dollar question I, honestly that we probably hear the most of so the first thing I look at is uh, the first thing I look at is carrying a walking stick with you of some sort have that with you so a dog in one hand walking stick in the other if a dog approaches you off leash the first thing I do is I hold that stick up in the air. We actually, we it happened during our pack walk, during our uh, celebration of dogs event. And we had 45 people on that walk. And I was towards the front and we started walking by a driveway, a longer driveway, about 100 yards long. Heard some barking, so I turned and looked and now here's two dogs that are running right at us, right down the path. And uh, I'm at the end of their driveway and I've got my big walking stick and I start waving it in the air and uh, one of them slowed down a little bit and the other one kept coming and uh, they both got close to the end of the driveway and so then I took my stick and I started kind of thumping the ground with it which doesn't make a lot of noise but there's something and the dog, uh, the one that came slower came up to me and I just took my, my walking stick and I just reached over and just poked it well, that was all that dog needed that one retreated right back down the driveway you know, no problem at all the other one just kind of kept coming. Now, it's my job. I've got all these people that are walking behind me with their dogs. And I've got this dog off leash in front of me that I know zero about. Obviously, I, you know, and then by this time, Serena was kind of coming up and uh, was my good wingman there. She was at the other uh, about 10 or 15 feet to my left. And we pretty, pretty much just created a barrier for this dog not to be able to get through. So he got to the end of his driveway and I had my stick out and I had, I had touched him with it a couple of times, nothing bad. And he, at that point, he just basically kind of froze and was staying right there where he was. He didn't want to go any further. The other part of that too is that we had a lot of dogs on that walk. And to him, that was probably really, really intimidating. For one dog, you know, one dog to go after another is fine. But for one dog to go after an entire uh, group of dogs is not a bright move because that guy's way outnumbered and he doesn't know that all these dogs don't know each other at least I don't think he does I, but I've never interviewed a dog but to me he he's looking at this like there's just constant movement and dogs and more dogs and more dogs and then his owner came down the driveway and called him back and he went back but that's to me where you know having that stick having something that you can wave in the air, thump on the ground, and if they get close enough, guess what? You can reach out and still keep your dog back and poke at that dog if you need to. At the end of the day, to me, I've gotta keep my dog safe, and if somebody else's dog is off running loose, then that's not what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, it's one of those things, but again, that's the million dollar question that we always, uh, that we always get here. I mean, it's literally at least once a week, um, you know, two or three times a week, whatever. I, I mean, it, it happens a lot. But again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I know I, uh, again, haven't been doing this for some time. I was, I've been trying to find a day of the week that I can do this at night because our turnout is about five times of what it is uh, during the day here. Because obviously everybody's at work, but this is something that uh, you guys can watch later on and always comment below and I can certainly answer any questions that anybody has uh, on this post without a problem but uh you guys it's friday it's the end of the week i hope everything's going well with you guys and uh i appreciate everybody that stopped by this was kind of my friday thoughts here it's a little randomness back and forth but uh hopefully there was something in it that you can uh, grasp out and apply towards uh, your everyday life so for now uh i'm signing off you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you next week